Iron warriors know it is difficult to chelate every day. Most iron warriors also know that continued and long-term adherence to chelation is essential to avoid the complications associated with excess iron. Understanding the buildup of iron and how iron interacts with cells and systems in our body can be a powerful tool to motivate you to achieve optimal adherence and thus minimize the risks of iron toxicity. Our hope in presenting this video is that iron warriors of all ages will use this information to help them succeed with their chelation therapy and in the maintenance of their overall health. Transfusions of red blood cells are essential and life-saving for many people in the inherited blood disorders community. But repeated transfusions are overwhelming to the body because we're not meant to process the new iron that's introduced in the body with transfused red blood cells. Red blood cells are full of iron, which plays an important role in the transport of oxygen from the lungs to all parts of your body. Red cells are constantly being recycled Chelation therapy is vital to survival because it provides a mechanism for your body to eliminate the excess iron accumulated in the body. Let's talk about how iron is normally recycled in our body. Once our red blood cells become too old to transport oxygen, our body replaces them with newly formed cells. The old red cells are removed from the circulatory system by cells called monocytes, and macrophages. Monocytes and macrophages are considered big eaters because their job is to keep our body clean of debris, including invaders such as viruses, bacteria, red blood cells, and other dying cells. When they eat the old red blood cells to remove them from circulation, they store the iron that was inside the old red blood cells and provide this iron to newly formed cells and also to other parts of the body that require iron. Normally, the production of new red cells uses up almost all of the recycled iron. The recycling and regulation of iron depends on transferrin, a molecule that transports iron. Transferrin moves throughout the body seeking to deposit iron where it is needed. Cells that need iron welcome the transferrin and accept the iron. Conversely, if the cells have enough iron, they will not accept iron bound to transferrin. When iron is hooked to transferrin, it is not toxic. Transferrin has a limitation to how much iron can be hooked and delivered. This is important for iron warriors to know because when a patient is transfused, there are a lot of red blood cells coming in that contain new, non-recycled iron. When the body is not producing enough red blood cells, the iron that came from the old red blood cells and the transfused red cells is not reutilized. With transfusions, there is so much iron coming in, but not enough space on the transferrin to hold all the iron. The remaining iron that is not hooked and carried by transferrin is called non-transferrin-bound iron, or NTBI. Unlike transferrin-bound iron, NTBI can get inside cells even when the cell doesn't need more iron. It is believed NTBI is responsible for damage to cells and causes iron overload in organs such as the heart and pancreas. Excess iron inside a cell can set off a chemical reaction that damages the structure of the cell and may even cause its death. It may also damage DNA and can cause cancer. This iron-induced cell damage contributes to damage in the heart, liver, and many different endocrine organs. Iron chelators can immediately remove NTBI from circulation, and they can also remove other iron that is accumulated body. 
Because the negative effect of excess iron is non-stop, it's important that iron warriors take their chelation therapy every day. The best way to protect your cells and organs is to maintain consistent chelation and to seek support and advice when you find you are not able to maintain adherence to the chelation therapy you are prescribed. Keep in mind the following. Every time you chelate, you are protecting your cells and organs from damage. Optimal iron chelation should be a consistent component of your care. Taking breaks from your chelation for reasons other than those recommended by your doctor will negate the good work you've done to stay adherent. Talking about your frustrations and barriers to adherence is healthy and should be an ongoing topic for discussion with your healthcare providers and support network.